Hello, welcome to my new studio setup. I say new, this bulb above me is now blue. Therefore, the whole studio aesthetic is new and blue. This is where I will be doing product reviews, discussions of general mountaineering topics, recommendations of movies to watch, all the rest of it. All of my mountain-based technical discussion gear reviews, blah de blah blah right here in this wee setup. Other than that, I'll be up mountains, hanging onto snowy cliffs, taking loads of cool videos, out in blizzards, camping in sub-zero temperatures. Anyway, today what I'm gonna be talking about is my sleeping bag system. Because one of the most important things you can do in the winter is have a nice, cozy, comfortable sleep. It's not always that easy to do, let's be honest. Sometimes you just shiver away and it's freezing and it's horrible, but it doesn't have to be that way. Don't suffer anymore, people. Be warm. Let's face it, when you're looking at sleeping bags online, especially four season sleeping bags that are gonna take you into the minus double figure territory, there's lots of bags on the market that'll take you to round freezing, and they're fine, that's fine. We don't generally get temperatures much below freezing in this country, but if you're into winter mountaineering in Scotland, you're gonna be spending times in places like the Cairn Gorms, and that can be a brutal cold, unforgiving place. It was minus 20 last time I was there. Up on the tops that is. We were down below it was about minus 10 but it was minus 20 up on the tops and if you're going to camp out in minus 20 you need some serious warm winter baggage going on. So four season sleeping bags. Like most of winter equipment they are very expensive though. They also tend to be very sizable and very heavy and very awkward to fit in your rucksack unless you're going to be spending upwards of two, three, four, five hundred pounds on a nice packable down one. People say don't get down in Scotland because it'll get wet but it doesn't get wet. When was the last time your sleeping bag got wet? Your sleeping bag doesn't get wet. It might get a little bit of moisture from having your feet against the end of the tent or you know climbing in with your boots on one night when you've been out for a pee but your sleeping bag is not going to get wet so buy down it's fine. If you're really concerned about using down in the UK get a sleeping bag cover, get a lightweight bivvy bag to go over the top whatever or just be careful don't get it wet down is fine however it's a bit more expensive and tends to be the more high-end sleeping bags that are going to cost you hundreds of pounds but if budget is of importance to you like it is to me like it is to everyone let's face it we're in tough times so budget is important weight is important size is important so here is my solution two bags that's right folks two sleeping bags Two is better than one because it creates a double layer system. If for any reason moisture gets through your outer bag, it's not gonna soak through to your inner bag. The great Andy Kirkpatrick himself, man of the mountains, he recommended on one of his blogs, two sleeping bags because you can buy one super hardy, super warm, four season bag that's gonna get you down to like minus 20, minus 30, but it's gonna be very expensive, very big, very heavy, and it's just gonna be used like a few times a year in extreme conditions. And then it's gonna sit in a cupboard, gathering dust the rest of the time. So if you do a two bag solution, you can have a lightweight summer bag with a slightly heavier weight three or four season bag, Combine the two, you get the functionality of a super hardcore winter bag, but you get the modularity and the flexibility of having two bags, a summer bag and a lightweight winter bag. Combine them, you've got an expedition set up, take them apart, you've got all other elements of the year covered. Summer, spring, autumn, rain, anything else in between. The two bags I have been using, this, the OEX Fathom EV400. It is a budget four season sleeping bag. I think it cost me 40 pounds. It says that it's good down to minus one. That's comfort. It says limit is minus eight. So it should keep you relatively comfortable between minus one and minus eight, depending on whether you're a cold sleeper or a warm sleeper. Extreme is minus 26, i.e. it will keep you alive down to minus 26. But if you find yourself in this bag at minus 26, you're gonna to struggle to stay alive. So this bag on its own, weighing 1100 grams, is good 
down to about two or three degrees Celsius. I've had it out in colder than that, but you do tend to have loads of layers on, two pairs of socks, hat, all the rest of it. If you want to sleep in just a base layer and a pair of socks and a wee beanie, you're going to need a bag that's more robust than this, but it's good down to two or three degrees Celsius. However, what I have done is backed it up with a Cocoon Prima Loft synthetic super lightweight one season sleeping bag liner. This came in at £70 on sale, so it's £110 for total, both bags. Combined weight of both bags is 1.85 kilograms, so it's less than two kilograms. Packs down to this size. Norm, this is actually the original bag from the OEX four season bag. I managed to fit the cocoon bag in here as well. So this goes in the bottom of my rucksack, tucks away, weighs less than two kilograms, is amazingly warm down to about minus 20, I would hazard a guess. I've never had it at minus 20, but I have had it at minus five, minus six, minus seven, that sort of thing. And I've actually been too hot, to be honest. I've had to take layers off, pairs of socks off. I've been too warm in sub-zero temperatures using the two bag system. I'm fairly confident I could probably get this bag down to about minus 20. I'm gonna go out in the Cairngorms next time it's looking like it's about minus 20 and put this to the test. And I'll do a in the field assessment of just how low you can go using the two bag system. Just for comparison, this is a four season sleeping bag. Very expensive. Not mine, it's actually my brother's and his wife's. They bought this, didn't quite realise how big and bulky it was. When it turned up, they nearly had a heart attack. It is massive. This will take you down to about minus 30 degrees Celsius, or so it says, but you know, you can't even fit that in your rucksack. This is like an expedition bag. You're gonna need a Sherpa to haul this stuff. So this is completely impractical, very expensive. Get rid of that. What we have here, is the two bag system. Essentially, you just have a super lightweight, one season synthetic Prima Loft sleeping bag. It's very thin, very lightweight. I can pack this down absolutely tiny, shove it in the bottom of my rucksack, take it out on a summer outing. It'll do me in the summer. It'll do me in like the spring, summer and early autumn, to be honest. It's tiny, but it's quite warm, packs down super small, weighs about 700 grams. It's great. Now, if you pair this, the Cocoon Prima Loft bag liner, if you pair that with just a bog standard, four season, quite cheap, off the shelf, go outdoors, 40 pounds, four season sleeping bag, you get a very warm, very usable, very flexible, very modular sleeping system. It's good to think about, it's a bit wanky, but it's good to think about it as a sleeping system because the whole system has to work together to keep you warm at minus 20. There's no point having this set up if your air mattress is rated to about, you know, R value one, R value two, that sort of thing. You're gonna be cold. Doesn't matter how thick and warm and cozy your sleeping bag is, if there's heat escaping from underneath you, if there's cold air coming up from the ground or in your air mattress, it's all gonna get sucked out from below. So you do need a sleeping pad with an R value of four or above. Something like the Thermarest NeoAir X Lite, that's the one I use. I also take out this super lightweight thin foil roll that I tuck inside my tent that I can stick under my sleeping bag if it's gonna be extremely low temperatures and that will add another few degrees of warmth, boost the R value of my sleeping bag. So it's super important that your whole sleeping system works coherently and cohesively in harmony with each other. No point having a warm bag if your sleeping mat is crap. No point having a super warm sleeping mat if you've got a really cold sleeping bag. You have to get it all dialed in. Also, using a big air pillow, sometimes the air inside that goes cold and your head gets cold. So it's just another thing to think about in your sleeping system. This is my recommendation, the two bag system. Super lightweight, thin bag, sort of lightweight, four season cheapish bag. Put them together, got yourself an expedition ready setup. Less than two kilos, barely a hundred pounds, packs down small enough to fit in the bottom of your rucksack. What's not to like?